Hi everyone, my name is Kristen and welcome to my channel. Here we explore an experiential understanding of spiritual awakening and manifestation, or as I like to call it, the law of reflection. In today's video, I want to talk about inspired action, which really is an overlooked element of conscious manifestation, or at least I think so. We often see it as an afterthought or something that is not really an important part of the process when actually it is essential. And this is because our understanding of inspired action is limited and often quite misunderstood. We often think that inspired action is when we are acting from a good state. So we're feeling good, we're in a good emotional state. And we take action on our desires from that state of being. And there is nothing wrong with doing this, by the way. So I'm not saying that. But true inspired action is actually spontaneous. And most of the time, it actually appears as if it's unrelated to the desire itself. So an example of what we usually think inspired action would be could be reaching out to someone we want to have a deeper connection with because we feel good right now in this moment. And again, nothing wrong with that, but it's usually not inspired action because there's often a subtle expectation behind it when we reach out from this state. We want the reaction to have a more favorable outcome and because we're in a positive or pleasant emotional state, we believe that it's more likely. And you'll know if you're doing that, because if the outcome isn't what you wanted, this will then give rise to questions like, well, it was inspired action, so why didn't it go the way that I wanted? Because actually, it wasn't inspired action. You were just feeling good and what, what really happened there is you were using this emotional state to subtly control the circumstance and hopefully mold it in your favor. And you'll know if you weren't doing that because it wouldn't bother you what the outcome was either way. But ultimately, the result depends on your deeper awareness of being, not just a fleeting mood that you are in right now. So an example of true inspired action and I'm going to actually draw on an example from my own experience um, a couple of years ago when I was in Los Angeles filming a documentary film project for my degree at the time. And at this time, I did not know anybody in LA. I didn't know anybody in the entire state of California, yet I had to interview at least 25 people, hopefully more, for my thesis, for my film project. And I had gone the usual route that everybody else would do, reaching out to people, feeling very nervous, feeling very afraid, hoping that it would work out for me and that I would actually go back to England with some footage. And of course, what reflected back was nobody wanted to participate. I was struggling to even get responses. And essentially what I decided to do was stop striving, stop panicking, stop worrying about it, and instead align with the desire as already done that I already had the participants, that the film was already going smoothly and that it was already completed and that there were no issues. So in aligning with that and surrendering to that, within the next couple of days, I had the desire to go and get my hair done. So I went to the local salon and while I was there, the stylist that was doing my hair started talking to me and we got to know each other and we became friends fairly quickly and he asked me what I was doing in LA because he could tell that I wasn't from there and I told him that I was making a film project a documentary film um, about actors in LA and he told me that he in fact was an actor and he wanted to be part of my project 
And through that one instance, he then introduced me to at least 20 other people that I could then interview for my project. So the problem was solved. Now, as you can see, the inspiration to go and get my hair done does not appear to be directly related to being able to film participants for a documentary film project. But I was following the inspiration that was coming up from surrendering and aligning to the desire and no longer worrying about it. And because of that shift, I then received the divine inspiration. I was then in divine flow. I acted on that divine inspiration and the manifestation came to pass. So true inspired action is what happens when we are genuinely aligned with the desire and our awareness of being is one with the desire itself. And when this happens, your baseline emotional state will be more relaxed. It will be more peaceful and content because you already feel that nothing is missing. And the divine inspiration that arises from this more often than not, it looks unrelated to the desire. Even in some cases where it, it is related, there would be no agenda. The action would be taken from the pure joy of being, from just being in flow with no real expectations on what the outcome needs to be. But more often, inspired action can look like the arising desire to go to the farmer's market, a spontaneous desire to invite friends over for dinner or learn a new language. It could be the desire to start a hobby that you never even considered before or just to go to bed earlier and start getting more sleep. True inspired action feels good and it's the true definition of following your joy and following your bliss. So why is this important? Because as these desires and impulses arise, they are actually arising from your alignment with the desire. And upon acting on this inspiration, you move deeper and deeper into the alignment until you are in full alignment, which is when the desire manifests. It doesn't manifest a moment before or a moment after. The desires only manifest when we are fully aligned. So acting on your joy and bliss is very important when it comes to manifestation. The key to successful intentional conscious manifestation is to first align with the desire through your intention, to connect to it through whatever method you prefer. For me, it's meditation and visualization. Then surrender and follow the process of divine inspiration as it arises, following your bliss. This is the quickest, most effortless, and most enjoyable way. And desires manifest fast. They don't take years and years because you're taking the path of least resistance and you're surrendering to the flow and you're trusting the process as well as enjoying it. After all, why should it be hard? Why should it be a struggle? You have a choice to enjoy this process. Now, most people, when they learn about conscious manifestation, they don't do what I just described. Instead, they overconsume manifestation content. They hopping around from coach to coach. They're obsessed with their desires. They're constantly doing things to make it happen, like obsessive affirming, for example. They're going down the healing journey rabbit hole rather than releasing in the moment and then continuing to align with their desire and follow their bliss again. Or they're talking to people every day about what they want to manifest and everything that's going wrong with it and, and rehashing the old story. And what happens? They burn out. Their doubts and fears arise and get the better of them. They start noticing that the desire isn't here yet. They're checking for it. They start questioning themselves and what they're doing wrong, what's happening. They start feeling discouraged. As more time passes, they start to lose morale. And these are the people that tell me 
that they wish they never found manifestation, that manifestation has made their life worse, that they don't have faith anymore, years have passed with no results, and they're too scared to try again out of fear of being disappointed. And what people that are experiencing what I just described also tend to do that leads to this burnout and this collapse is they are in an obsessive pursuit of desire and constant doing and they shut their life down and they stop enjoying it. They don't respond to the cues of divine inspiration and so they stop arising. So the pursuit of their desire becomes the driving force and it becomes more important than anything else and it's very common to then see people neglect themselves and feel dissatisfied with life in general because they have outsourced all of their peace and happiness and love to a particular outcome rather than following their joy first and enjoying the present moment right now. If you resonate with what I've just said, my advice would be take a break and go back to basics. Reconnect with your awareness of being and start following your joy and allow your joy to lead. Reconnect with the present moment and ask yourself, what would I love right now? And start acting on that as the inspiration arises. Even if the inspiration is something that seems to be small, like going to get a cup of coffee or go buy yourself some flowers, whatever the case may be. Remember, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So nothing is insignificant and everything leads you towards the manifestation if you follow the divine action or the inspired action. But when we don't do that and we shut it down, this is why we see stagnancy when it comes to conscious manifestation. So when it comes to people who they haven't seen any changes at all, or it's very sluggish, it's very slow, it's because they're not acting on their desire. They're just expecting it all to change in front of them, even though they're obsessing over it and coming from a place of lack. It doesn't work, unfortunately. So manifestation really is quite a simple formula that you align with the specific desire, and then you follow the divine inspiration, the divine bliss that arises, and you will experience the desired expression, and it works 100% of the time. Now, I do want to say a quick word on lifestyle changes, um, because many people teach lifestyle changes as a way to allow you to feel good again so that you can move into further alignment with desire. And it is true that the better you feel, the easier it is to align and live in the end of a desire. But although technically lifestyle changes do work, if these changes are not coming from divine action, they will actually just feel like an obligation or a chore or pressure. And this completely defeats the purpose. So allow all changes to come from alignment first and then act on the inspiration as it arises. So the, the self transforms on its own. You don't need to try to improve it or strive to be a better version of self because the self is not who you are. This is why I do not teach self-concept. You are the divine, you are God, you are consciousness. You don't need to change your self-concept. Yourself is not manifesting anything. All manifestations come through God. So instead of improving your self-concept, instead recognize your true nature first, then align with the desire, then act on the divine inspiration and the transformation will be rapid and it will be so much faster than trying to improve your self-concept, trying to think of yourself a different way, trying to become a bigger, better, more empowered version of self that deserves their desires, that's worthy of their desires. You don't need willpower when it comes to divine inspiration. Divine inspiration or inspired action is easy, it's effortless, and it's enjoyable. But you do need willpower when it comes to changing your self-concept and making lifestyle changes. The problem with trying to discipline yourself to make lifestyle changes 
is that we start to make the incorrect association that our desire manifesting is now conditional on these changes. So for example, you will be unconsciously thinking something like, only when I improve my self-concept will I get my desire. Completely untrue. Only when I become more organized or on top of things, or I start going to the gym or I start eating healthy, will things then work out for me? Completely untrue. And I'm not saying any of those things are bad or that you shouldn't do them. I actually think they're great things to do. But inspired action is effortless. It doesn't require discipline. It's not a chore. Inspired action comes from alignment first, and then you follow the breadcrumb trail, which leads to the desire. You don't have to worry about the self transforms on its own. And it's not even who you are. The self is just a manifestation in consciousness, but consciousness is who you really are. So in my opinion, put your focus there. So really, it's all about being first and following your divine inspiration or your inspired action. And it, this is not about the things you have to do in order for your desires to manifest. It's not about striving and hard work and discipline. It's actually surrender, enjoyment, pleasure, fulfillment, going with divine flow, which inevitably leads to the desire. If the process is stressful or a struggle, you're doing it wrong. Follow your divine joy and the process will be effortless. I'm not saying you won't have bad moods sometimes or a down day, and that's absolutely fine. But for the most part, you will feel content. You will feel whole and complete in this moment right now. You will be grounded in the present moment, you will be residing in your true nature, and you will be following your bliss, following the breadcrumbs of your joy, and the desired manifestation is inevitable. Hope that helps.